Do you know which political party initiated the fight for paternal leave and the fight against the billable ACDP? And today we're covering their 2024 manifesto. Welcome to Citizen Concerned, where we remind you to beware of the comrades. I'm Gatlejo and would appreciate it if you subscribed to our YouTube channel, liked and shared this video with other citizens. So right from the beginning, the ACDP makes it clear that they support an open market economy with a social conscience. I like that. Free market economy is what we need, guys, not what the communists are putting us through. They plan to develop infrastructure and a professional public service. I think we can all agree that there are a bunch of government employees that are not professional, from nurses to police officers all the way to the current ministers, unprofessional. ACDP also wants to ensure education and vocational training is relevant to global trends. We really need to catch up. We are so far behind, it is not even funny. The fact that we have so many graduates sitting unemployed is a reflection that we have not been stagnant, but have rather been going backwards. There was a time when going to university was a guarantee for employment, but now how many, uh, how many university graduates are sitting unemployed? There was a time when we could rely on our plumbers, carpenters and so forth, but now we rely on artisans and professionals from outside South Africa to do our work while millions of our own sit unemployed. The ACDP plans to foster a culture of entrepreneurship through mentoring, startup funding and skills development. They do not go into further detail regarding this, but yes, this is what we need. There is a lot that needs to change in our culture as South Africans. The weakness of waiting for employment instead of creating employment needs to be overcome. The ACDP wants a link between businesses and education to ensure that the qualifications that are coming out of university are the ones that are being sought after by businesses. Nothing against anyone having these qualifications, but we can't have a nation full of graduates with gender studies, journalism, and political sciences. We need math, sciences, economics, uh, businesses, engineering, and not humanities. This is an excellent point, ACDP. We need an education system that produces what businesses are looking for. They seek to encourage the starting of businesses by reducing the red tape, which is good. They also want to focus on South Africa's competitive advantages, including mining and natural resources through beneficiation. It certainly would be in our interest to get the most from our nation's minerals, right? The ACDP wants to end cater deployment and race-based policies which have caused the rise of prices and tenderpreneurs. With the few stories we know about tenderpreneurs, I think we all can agree that this is a necessary policy in South Africa. They plan to review the issues with our fuel to make sure they lower fuel prices. It is no secret that fuel prices in South Africa are too high and a major contributing factor is that there are too many taxes on our fuel. We covered this a bit in a recent video titled Stop Smoking Our Country Away. You may find the link to this video in the description box below. The ACDP plans to inspect small businesses to make sure they comply with health standards. This is good, but I don't think it's a major issue to me. <laughs> Maybe this was inspired by the rise in practices we have seen in spaza shops recently, some of which were allegedly the cause of death of two children who were said to have uh, died after consuming poisonous and contaminated snacks from a local spaza shop. While inspecting small businesses for health compliance may be a good thing, I would say that the whole spaza business needs to be thoroughly investigated. From the legal status of the spaza owners in South Africa, their business documents, issues around the items they import, the taxes they pay or avoid paying and everything else. 
I don't know. What do you guys think about this policy? They want to bring more social workers and community development workers. And while this is a kind gesture, our social issues may need a different solution. There are several issues that should be addressed at their root. Issues such as teenage pregnancies, uh, fatherless homes, children being raised by grandparents, gang-related behavior, the overconsumption of alcohol, being dirty and promiscuous and not taking responsibility for one's actions. I think dealing with it at the root cause is better than dealing with the aftermath. I mean, I know of people who are living in this destructive way and they are social workers in their community and these people do not bother to make use of the services of the social workers, which to me shows that there's a deeper problem than an absence of social workers. What are your thoughts on this? The ACDP also wants to make use of the manufacturers of the equipment at ESCOM to assist with the maintenance of the equipment. They wish to employ more capable and competent people, including bringing back retired engineers, not these inexperienced engineers that have taken over most of our institutions. And of course, I know that there are some competent engineers among the new ones, but there are also a lot of incompetent competent people who are breaking instead of building. They wish to remove the idea of BEE and other nonsense that has caused corruption in the ESCOM entity. Why is this a good thing or a good policy? Well, BEE has resulted in a few black incompetent connected individuals engaging in corruption and overpricing of goods and services while the experienced and competent small companies that could have been helping ESCOM are being sidelined. BEE in state-owned entities has ensured that the few connected and incompetent black-owned companies got tenders resulting in poor performance that affected South Africans through consequences like load shedding, contaminated water. With this evidence in mind, this ACDP policy absolutely makes sense. They also want maintenance to be on time on all equipment and have all errors cleared, which is good. Additionally, ACDP wants to support more renewable energy and independent power producers. That is fine, but hopefully with the reappointment of skilled and knowledgeable engineers at ESCOM, we won't need to focus too much on alternative um, energy sources. They want to encourage a culture of payment of electricity, particularly in areas where municipalities owe billions. Absolutely brilliant idea. I'm just curious about how are you going to do that, but this one really needs to be sorted out. We can't be consuming free things in jail. Ultimately, they are not free because someone somewhere will have to pay for those who are not paying. So ACDP is 100% right. Everyone needs to contribute for their consumption. Furthermore, ACDP will ensure that criminal syndicates, corrupt employees and service providers face the full force of the law. Good. That's what I want to hear. Repercussions for those that are ruining our country with their tender corruption activities. The ACDP will fix the rail network to remove freight from the roads back to rail. Okay, that is good. <laughs> that can help with so many things. It will stop the overuse of our roads, which results in a need for frequent maintenance, which is funded by our taxes. The trucking industry has also rendered our roads dangerous, especially at night. So that danger will be eliminated through this solution. This move will also reduce the cost of goods. Why? Well, imagine this. One train pulling 20 cars from Johannesburg to Durban driven by two people instead of 20 trucks all driven by 20 drivers and their assistants making it 40 people to transport 20 trucks. Since transporting the coal, the fruits and vegetables, metals, building material, grain fertilizer, whatever it is, is going to be cheaper on the manufacturer and the distributors, the price at which they sell it to us as consumers will be lower. So do you see the benefits of this policy? They wish to increase security to remove the issues around vandalism and thefts. Also good. 
Some of these tracking operators are responsible for the damage of rail infrastructure, especially with ESCOM coal-related issues. Transnet port terminals are very slow currently, so ACDP would like to involve the private sector in running the port terminals at Transnet. Obviously, this is because of the current inefficiencies at Transnet, but just as I've said before, my view is that we don't really need to involve the private sector in these processes. If Transnet was functioning under apartheid in all the years of Nelson Mandela and Tabombeki, why can't it function now? Competence, maintenance and corruption are the main issues to resolve when it comes to our state-owned entities. I think serious attention should be directed to the issues that revolve around competence, corruption and maintenance. The ACDP wishes to restore the Prasa service and ensure that there is enough safe, modern, affordable and reliable rail transport for our citizens. This really needs to be done ASAP because there are gangs and organized crimes that are also getting in the way of the rail industries getting back online. And the government needs to sort this out urgently. The ACDP seeks to recover the billions stolen through state capture corruption and ensure that the thieves are put behind bars. This is very, very important. We can't have people commit crimes without punishment. That is one of the reasons why people have become so despondent when it comes to matters of politics. We need to ensure and show that nobody is above the law in South Africa. This definitely needs to get done. Include President Cyril Ramaphosa and his cultures on that list and we have a deal. His Angola cows and buffalo can testify too. The ACDP wants to establish an institution similar to the Scorpions. They wish to make sure it is prosecutor-driven as a specialized anti-corruption entity. Whether it is like the Scorpions or not, I, I don't really care. What I care about are the results. Anti-corruption? Yes, please. Prosecution? Yes, please. They plan to protect the SIU, NPA, SAPs and Hawks, among many others, from political interference. This is, a, this is a good thing. And to add to that, I would say there should be no political interference in any of the state-owned entities. None whatsoever. They wish to approach the international courts to help recover the billions stolen from South Africa through state capture. I didn't even know you could do that. They also say that these courts are quick to hear the matters and that is a big deal considering how long it takes for our local courts to resolve some of our high profile cases. Just think about Tabo Bester, Senzo Meiwa, aka Edwin Sodi and other cases. These should be resolved by now. We should not wait years for justice. So if this is a good alternative to help bring the people like the Guptas to justice, then please, it should be taken. The ACDP seek to deny bail for specific types of crimes such as murder, rape, armed robbery and car hijacking. The parole issue needs to be addressed. We can't have lawbreakers like Jacob Zuma being given medical parole when they are not even sick. They plan to make sure that prisoners are made to learn skills that they can use to pay back the money that is feeding them. That is brilliant. I hope what it means is they should be learning how to farm and farm for their food and produce surplus to sell. They should make their own beds and produce surplus. They should build their own buildings and make their own clothes and shoes. I don't know how they seek to implement it, but I think that could be a good idea. I like this one that says that they seek to ensure that corrupt officials are speedily prosecuted and that they are not suspended on full pay forever. Those corrupt officials must also be made to pay back the money. Hopefully, this means they lose their houses and cars. ACDP also wishes to strengthen whistleblower protection. We can't have patriotic people who report crimes getting assassinated as we have had under the ANC throughout the years. It is unacceptable. What do you think of the ACDP manifesto so far? 
They also seek to provide more police stations and courts, increase police visibility, protect the communities and borders with roadblocks. They will also make sure the military patrols are borders in order to keep us safe from illegal immigration. They plan to make sure that gangsterism and drugs and alcohol problems are resolved. We certainly need these issues to be attended to. We can't have drug dealers being arrested and coming back to the streets by nightfall. We need repercussions, not this nonsense we have been seeing under the ANC. The ACDP plans to put title deeds into the hands of the people who occupy the land they have been given by the state through land reform. They also plan to give just compensation wherever land is expropriated. Sounds like a fair, peaceful and good enough deal to me. They want us to have the freedom to acquire land and rent it out or sell it. I know that due to the limited and victim mindset that the comrades have worked hard to instill in black people, some people simply cannot see themselves as landowners without using the expropriation without compensation route. But the truth is, we can all achieve this. If you want us to discuss this further, please let us know in the comments below and we can do a video about it. But simply put, we as black people should actually aspire to achieve these things. They are achievable. Sacrifices are needed to do it, but it is achievable. They want to give the people state land that is not being utilized currently. That is definitely needed, as we currently have an issue whereby the ANC government has been sitting on millions of hectares without giving it to the people that need to use that land. So yes, please, ACDP, let the land be given to the citizens. They also want to make sure that land that currently belongs to tribal and trust land is moved to the hands of the community members under those tribes and trusts. This is so that community members benefit from that land. Sounds fair, right? One thing I think is very necessary is that ACDP plans to ensure that the land restitution claims that have not been finalized are finally addressed to make sure that those that were dispossessed of their land get their land back or get monetary compensation. This is a big deal. The ANC government has not made sure that these issues are finalized for people to get justice according to the law. And this has opened several cans of worms. Can you imagine how much racial divide could have been avoided if black people who were dispossessed of their land got it back between 1994 and 2000? Do you think the EFF would have had a leg to stand on if the land restitution claims were adequately and competently resolved 10 years into democracy? Better late than never. And the peaceful ACDP route is way better than the communist route suggested by other parties. They seek to promote rural urbanization and industrialization, which is excellent. Under ACDP, land invasions are to be met with the full force of the law, which is only fitting as we cannot have land invasions in a free and law-abiding nation. They wish to promote the existence of all races of farmers. They wish for commercial farmers to be protected and encourage the rise of the smaller farmers. But they wish to end the habit of taking farms away from the commercial farmers and giving them to subsistence farmers. That idea seems great until you really consider the implications. And we don't even have to think about it. The real life evidence is there. We can't have that nonsense continuing to happen. Food safety is needed. So good point, ACDP. They wish to ensure that infrastructure such as sewage and landfill sites keep up with housing development. This, I think, is to address the population growth of residential areas and towns to make sure the infrastructure can support the number of people on their properties. This is meant to deal with the unhygienic living conditions we see in some of these areas where the infrastructure has not been maintained. They also seek to ensure housing development tenders are transparent. To be honest, with enough skilled labor which values work, we can have municipalities also building houses without tenders. 
But geez, <laughs> our municipalities are currently not trustworthy, especially with these rubbish unions now. So I guess we have to rely on the private sector. As long as people like Saudi and the Pisanes or Mkizes don't end up becoming the rulers of that system. The ACDP plan to eradicate informal settlements by prioritizing permanent instead of temporary solutions. They plan to replace communal toilets with bulk water and sanitation infrastructure. They also wish to make sure that all schools have flushing toilets to replace pit toilets. I think we can all agree that that is necessary. They want to hold underperforming authorities as well as water boards accountable for poor service. That should be included in the laws of South Africa and in employment contracts. We can't have labor courts and CCMA defending incompetent people who are destroying our lives here. The ACDP wishes to employ the private sector to help remedy some of the issues. As I said in the DA Manifesto review, I have a love and hate relationship with involving the private sector in government affairs. We need to ensure that we don't overdo the private sector in, uh, involvement. I will say it again, the government and state-owned entities have worked before without private sector involvement. So what stops them from working again without private sector involvement? But I do understand that currently we have a public sector that cannot be relied on, so we might need to work with the private sector to get us back on track. But let us not... Please, let us not have a private sector dependency, please. When it comes to schooling, the ACDP wants to adopt a world-class system such as the Cambridge system. That is good. Why should children of politicians be taught using the Cambridge system while they subject the rest of us to the 30% uh, 30 system? ACDP wants to remove the billable legislation which has attacked homeschooling, parents and school governing bodies. They have already been very active in fighting the battle against this billable and that is very good. There is no way that an ANC government can tell us how to educate our children when they have done such a dismal job in the education system. Parents should have the right to decide what is good for their children's education. How does a government failing to help the children currently under their care reach their fullest potential have the audacity to demand even more control over our children? Absolute nonsense. So I totally am in support of the removal of the billable. They plan to reintroduce school inspectors into schools. Considering the high number of poorly run schools, this is a much needed intervention. The ACDP wishes to restrict union activities near schools and to deal with the power of unions to influence the appointment of teachers. That would be wonderful because we can't have unions control education at any point. In fact, there probably should be no unions in government and certain services. They also wish to remove the 30% pass mark from our schools. Thank you. Thank you very much. We can't have this nonsense, guys. So good stuff, ACDP. Additionally, they will focus on trades training, especially for high school dropouts. Great. Yes, we need a lot of plumbers and electricians in this country and foreign nationals have taken over that industry as if we have never had these people in our past. Many old people have the skills that we are now importing because there was no transfer of skills to the next generation. Majority of our men have no clue how to do plumbing, carpentry or bricklaying. We really have no skills and that needs to be addressed. And women, I am not excluding you. You too can get these valuable skills if you wish. The ACDP wants to do away with the NHI and improve the public health care services and facilities, improve the waiting time, increase the number of doctors, nurses and admin staff. They want to ensure that a sufficient stock level of medicine is always maintained. Small issues like this are how you fix the healthcare in South Africa, not the silly NHI. Excellent stuff, ACDP. 
They wish to increase the number of 24-7 facilities, especially in vulnerable communities. Are these not policies that inspire you to vote for? They want to encourage healthy lifestyles, exercise, nutrition, and so on. They wish to provide counseling and care for women who get unplanned pregnancies. Although this is a good thing, what would be better is if they actually address the root cause of these unplanned pregnancies. The root, not the fruit. The ACDP plans to oppose any mandatory vaccinations such as the COVID-19 issue. They plan to also provide cover for people who suffered medical injuries related to the vaccines during COVID. I think this might actually be a real issue for a lot of our people who had no voice in the issue regarding the COVID uh, issues. I think this is a fair issue. They also want to make sure that South Africa will not be forced into rubbish contracts that are not good for the country. I like that. Regarding Israel, the ACDP will establish diplomatic relations with Israel. They also wish to work towards finding a lasting peace in the Middle East. You know, the same things that people love to say. And I like that. We all want lasting peace across the world, right? But in as much as we want peace in other nations, peace in the world, let's not try to focus on other people's problems while we neglect our own. An objective person will tell you that regarding the Israel and Palestine issue, both sides have their crimes and both sides have been victims. The ANC wants to act as if Hamas is a nice, innocent party that is minding its own business and it is attacked for no reason. Maybe Israel is now targeting civilians instead of Hamas soldiers. Who knows? But it's also not like Hamas soldiers wear uniforms to identify themselves. Hamas also targets civilians. Are we okay with that? Both sides can make compelling arguments for why we should pick their side. The best thing to do is to pick South Africa's side. It's not like we don't have enough on our plate as it is. The ACDP also say they promote the family as the cornerstone of a strong and vibrant society. The ACDP seeks to bring back morality within our youth and our people. We can't have a nation that lacks values and morals, so this is very important. They wish to remove the policies that have damaged family values in South Africa. These particular values are what kept South Africa strong, and now with the destruction of families, we are not safe from the rise of poor quality role models. There is no avoiding it. We need to confront the absence of morals and values. We need to deal with promiscuity, teenage pregnancies, alcohol and substance abuse, fatherlessness and debauchery we see in our society. The rubbish music, the vulgar television programs and the rest of the issues that we see affecting our people, young and old. So yeah, the ACDP manifesto is good. It's way, way better than the ANC one. Are they worth voting for? I certainly think so. They are not advocating for communism and that to me is a big deal. So very good. They are advocating for a solid moral family unit and that to me is a big deal. I like that the manifesto is very short. Some of these other political parties seem to want to waste a lot of our time or even discourage us from even reading their manifesto based on how long the manifestos are, you know? Anyway, that was the ACDP 2024 manifesto. What are your thoughts? What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? Does the manifesto encourage you to vote for them? Let us know in the comment section below, please. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Katlaro. This is Citizen Concerned. And until next time, beware of the comrades.